Man, I haven't made a video in three weeks. Hello? Hey, mate. Oh, hey, mom. It's CJ CJ. Oh, hey, what's up, man? I'm a huge fan of your content. I saw you hadn't posted in a bit. Yeah, man. I've just been really down on myself lately. You know, I just... Nonsense. You can't doubt yourself. How do you think I managed to fry Furia on the barbie? Uh, skill? No, hard work. Oh, yeah, right. Well, thanks, CJ. You know, I think I'll work on something now. Hey, by the way, do you mind if I keep this in a video? I don't mind it. What's going on, guys? Bel Air here. Glad to be back on the pitch with you all. It's been a minute. We have a lot of off-season and just preseason stuff that I want to get to here in the near future. But before we do that, I have a video idea that has been burning a hole in my pocket here for, uh, for quite a while that I wanted to get to. In early October, I had tweeted out that I wanted to get more familiar with Shaw Set 45 and his gameplay. I, of course, know now, you know, Shaw Set has still been hanging around for quite a while, still participating in main events, but I don't know a lot about him and his results, especially what he brought to the table when he was at his peak. And that peak coincided with uh, what I kind of know is the one fun fact about Shaw Set right now which is that he was the first one to pioneer, usher in widespread use of the vehicle we see him on right now, which is the Fennec. This is, uh, we're watching quarterfinals against Cloud9 uh, from DreamHack Valencia, which was in 2019. And this is widely considered the first time that a pro uh, brought the Fennec into kind of uh, being a viable vehicle at the RLCS and of course that has now trickled down to every single ranked game that I am ever a part of. Now the reason that I wanted to do this uh, in part was because the other day uh, a couple weeks ago I had played a baker's dozen uh, ranked games and I think in like six straight every single car was a Fennec besides me who obviously rocks the Dominus come on guys and I was like what is happening I feel like it didn't used to be this way and uh, in short, I think the reason for that is that, uh, you know, we want to replicate success. If we see somebody doing something at an incredibly high level, look at this carry, look at that nice little extra touch gimmick has no chance on that one in transition. Uh, you want to replicate success. And this is, like I said, 2019. This is kind of peak of Shaw Set's powers. Let me open my notes here. I just want to take you guys through... 2019 for Shaw Set as uh, he's going to put in another goal here. Top three at European finals. Top eight world champions. Wins this event we're watching right now, DreamHack Valencia. Second place at RL Summit. Wins season eight for Europe. And then goes top eight in the world championships again. And I feel like that level of success is something that you want to replicate. What's... um. Like, like another example of this, right, is what is the most popular sneaker in the NBA? If you guess Kobe's, you'd be correct. At least last time I checked, it was Kobe's. And look at this one. Just going to rip that one. Squishy is no chance to get there. The reason that Kobe's is the most popular shoe is because everybody looks up to Kobe, the Black Mamba, as one of the best to ever do it. One of the best pure scorers we have ever had in the sport. And not only did Kobe obviously rock Kobe's and everything that he meant to that sport and, you know, him being what a 50, there's just a brick wall there. What he meant to so many players when they were coming up, when they were younger. And then also now so many high level pros rock Kobe's that all the other pros want to rock Kobe's as well. It's kind of one of those things, right? Where it's, um, it's like, it's like, um, Remember when Astral had a great world championship on the Finnick with the bluster bar and then everybody was using the bluster bar? Or Vatira has an awesome, you know, LAN event, so now everybody is copying kind of the colors of the decal he's using for the Finnick. Or Radosin has a sick season, so a couple people start stealing that disgusting, like, Nickelodeon slime boost he was wearing. Uh, you know, Yan on that carbonized or carbonizer, whatever it's called, Octane, that everybody takes that. It's the reason why Cristiano wheels were so popular. I could go on and on. Once somebody shows that something is viable and top tier, everybody wants to copy it. And that's a big reason why 
this event that we're seeing here is what ended up making the Phoenix so popular. Shaw set absolutely runs the table, makes other top teams like this Cloud9 quarterfinals, makes them look silly. And then other people, hey, maybe this Fennec is, uh, is pretty sick. So I wanted to kind of go over that, but also I wanted to kind of spotlight the shine that Shaw Set had. You know, I got to tell you, I went back and rewatched all the games from this event. And uh, I watched like the YouTube cuts so I could see, you know, how people were talking and face cams and all of that stuff. Shaw Set really reminds me a lot of like a modern day Seiko where he is just a stone cold killer. He scores a crazy goal and he's just real stoic, doesn't show a lot of emotion, seems to be kind of a silent assassin in that way, doesn't do a lot of talking. They uh, allow Farah to do that for the team. Um, just a lot of similarities, especially with him being such an elite goal scorer. Um, of course, Shaw Setz is, uh, is a lot more grounded. I would say his best skill is his ground dribbling ability. He's just absolutely slicing dudes up, taking ankles, breaking axles, whatever you want to call it. And uh, this event was sick. It was crazy to watch. Really, really cool to see. Um, this was kind of before I was a super fan. I, of course, was familiar with Rocket League, but I was still playing basketball at the time. So I wasn't really watching DreamHack Valencia's. Couldn't have told you who Shaw Set was from any other player. So it was really cool to go back and watch this. This was a game three uh response cloud nine are up 2-0 and then psg are just gonna lay the smack down shaw set with the savior and the hat trick on two assists and three shots absolutely killing them they're gonna end up reverse sweeping cloud nine and uh one last thing here before we move on to the semis i gotta say i was really surprised that uh pre-game everybody was losing their minds about gimmick that's really shocking to me. I thought it would have been squishy, right? It's squishy muffins. But everybody was like, oh, man, gimmick on the offensive end. If gimmick can get it going, they're really going to be in trouble. I was like, huh, not what I would have expected. Anyways, let's uh, let's move on to the semifinals and uh, talk a little bit more about this event and Shawset's teammates. PSG going up against the Bricks, a pickup team of Cooksier97, who is on uh, one of the only other viable RLCS cars at the time, the Batmobile, a lot and speed. This Bricks team, really good, took down some quality opponents, but uh, I got to say, this series was not very competitive walk watching it back. Uh, Bricks just could not get their offense going, and we're going to see it here. Shaw set was just cutting him up. Um, a big series as well for his teammates. Farah is just, he's not hyper mechanical. He's not going to hit you with anything that makes you watch a replay, but he just does a lot of the little stuff really, really well and is an excellent connector. I got to say, I really liked watching back this event because it's it being a little less mechanical and a little more bare bones kind of gives you a more straightforward understanding of what we're looking at like now it's you know triple flip reset into a musty pass and it's kind of like i don't really it's my eyes kind of bleed if i watch too much rlcs for a while at the top level nowadays but this was just you know some good old-fashioned i know exactly what's happening kind of rocket league and it really allowed me to appreciate farah in a way that i probably wouldn't appreciate a similar player in, a, in today's game. Just that connective tissue, solid 50s, always making the right play seemingly. And Fruity, Fruity's gross in, in, a, in a good way. I was blown away by some of the shots that Fruity hit, some of the passes that he makes. Uh, his mechanics are really kind of stand out against the crowd when, like I said, mechs at a really high level were not a super common part of the game. And uh, yeah, I hope we get to see one in, uh, in some of these replays that I chose because there were a couple of times where I was like, oh my God, Fruity, what was that? And uh, Shaw Set just, again, makes it look so easy in, in this event. Uh, the way he's able to hit with power, um, his speed seems to be a step ahead of everybody. But again, the thing that he really is crushing people at in this event is, uh, is just his, his ability to beat people. 
so easily and just cut him up with his ground dribbles. Um, it's kind of, it seems a little unfair at points, to be honest with you, the ease in which he gets past some of his opponents. Some other people who really stood out from a mechanical level, I gotta tell you, man, I said it in the quarterfinals, but gimmick, some of the stuff he did in the replays I watched, just it, it looked way more modern than a lot of the other people that I was watching him play against. Um, his wave dashes, his ability to take stuff off the ceiling, get back to resets, uh, just some stuff like that seemed to be a level above. A lucky deflection there by Shaw Set. Um, so he really, really stood out in a big way. Uh, I was impressed by uh, Astral. Of course, I kind of already knew what to uh, expect from him. Fairy Peak stood out in a big way, uh, in the uh, especially in the um, not playoff matchup that they had. They, they played in group stages, and uh, PSG got dominated pretty easily. They got swept by, uh, by Vitality in that one. And then the final thing I'll say is in the in the grand finals that we're going to watch next, they go up against Justin, who surprisingly is rocking the Dominus, which is uh, really cool to see. And yeah, Justin just looks uh, advantaged over over uh, a lot of his opponents in a lot of the games I watched. I went back and watched some of their series just to to dive down that rabbit hole a little bit as well. But this PSG team um, was really really good. We already went over kind of the. Uh, the, the record that they had over the course of 2019. And Jossette was a, was, was a big reason for that. Um, it seemed like at the time, from what I could gather from what the kind of commentary and analysis of this event was, the front runners surprisingly were, you know, who were talked about heavily, were Cloud9 and NRG. Uh, Vitality were of course there as well. But it was kind of more of a will they show up, won't they show up kind of deal. Um, and then PSG, I think, was kind of taking people by surprise where they had made it to a couple events but kind of had the same rub on them where it was like sometimes they kill it and then other times they're just not looking super good. Shaw set with the easy under dribble there is going to take this one to the ceiling and just crank that one past Cucks here who has no chance. Um, shots like that at the time were just blowing people away. Um, of course, now we consider that a lot more common uh, common than it than it was at this time. But yeah, those were those were kind of the big takeaways uh, from the event. Let me go back to my notes here and uh, make sure that I'm not leaving anything out. I think this is a cool opportunity to talk about um, just kind of cars and what is viable and what is not within the RLCS. I was going to make this into a bigger kind of the Fennec video, but I think it's important to, uh, I've already been away for a couple of weeks now and, uh, I don't want to just keep telling myself like, Oh, just take your time and you can come up with a video in the future. And, uh, you know, you just got to rip the bandaid off and get some things going. So as we get into this last game, um, I want to lock in a little bit on the gameplay of Shaw set again is just going to absolutely eat up the stat sheet here make it look really easy against the bricks um so yeah how about we take this opportunity to ask some bigger questions about the cars that we use within the game where that might go in the future and then uh, kind of watch some of chassette's gameplay as we get into the grand finals neo tokyo match point for the entire tournament here against NRG who uh we it seemed like we kind of expected to see at this point in the game at this point in the uh in the tournament rather so the Finnick and I, I hope I probably cut it in uh in between this game and the last one but uh the Finnick has just exploded in popularity post this event it comes out in uh in June, I believe, June 1st. It was the same day that uh that Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving joined the Brooklyn Nets for for a little bit of a uh, for a little bit of some time perspective. And uh since then it's just exploded. It's to the point now where it's, you know, 75% utility within uh the RLCS especially. I'm unsure about, you know, just general Rocket League gameplay. 
And also it changes a little bit regionally as well, where North America uses a lot more octane than others. But it's kind of a two car sport now. We don't see any more Dominus. We'll see a little bit of like the Mustang Mach-E here and there by players like Cash and Joyo. Uh, we'll see a little bit of the fast forward by like Metzenaris and KDOP. But there's really not a ton, even though there's over 100 cars in Rocket League, which is just a little weird. I wish it was different than that. Um, and I know that I think Waiton had put out a video probably like a year ago or something like that talking about how Psionics or Epic or whomever you want to kind of give the, the credit to has tried to adjust some of the hitboxes on cars to make them more true to form, which I think is cool. I would love to see, you know, 17 cars be viable options within the RLCS just to make it a little more unique give each player their own kind of feel and this is that ground dribbling we're talking about look at this from Chaussette gets up to this one goodbye Justin absolutely see a fire burner and then just a quick uh, flick there over Garrett G just what are you going to do to stop that uh, making the energy defense look like warm butter on that one but I think it'd be really cool to see a, a lot more cars and I'm curious to hear if you guys have the same opinion or if you kind of like it as is, because I think one of the benefits of having it uh, like we have it now is it makes it a lot easier for the casual viewer to just come in or a new viewer rather to come in and quickly understand what's happening. Uh, if you just have a bunch of cars, as I talk through this, it's really not that big of a hindrance, but being like, do each of these cars do something different? And it's like, no, they're all basically, you know, the same in some form or fashion. Uh, but I think like what we see with the Finnick here, all it takes is one person to kind of bring something into uh, the fold to be more popular. The question is, will anybody kind of take the opportunity to do that? I know that we saw no way that goes in. Wow. Another great ground dribble there from Chaussette. I know we saw, we've seen here and there introductions of other cars that don't really last. The Dingo was cool for a second. Nobody really picked that one up. The NASCAR, I really liked. I actually rocked the NASCAR for a while. I still use the Breakout from time to time. I still really like the Dominus for the flicks uh, and some of the power that you can get off of it. But I understand that it's kind of two cars. And if I'm in a little bit of a slump, guess what I do? I switch onto the Octane to the Phoenix. So it's not as though I am exempt from doing the same thing that all the pros do. Uh, but I think it's kind of one of those things where it's kind of a game of, of feel and momentum and... Uh, feeling confident and uh, if you are on the Merc and you have a bad game it's like well it's this freaking Merc you know got to get off of this thing got to use the good cars um, but I would love to see more cars introduced in, in, into the game and I'm curious if you guys use uh, different cars now in your own ranked experience or if you would like to see uh, other cars be introduced and Chaussette says thank you very much for that one that was a terrible dribble I'm also gonna steal your boost here and then get out of dodge I'll take this one as well it was really cool to go back and watch this event uh, I liked doing this kind of historical look back would you guys want more of this and there's Chaussette with another ceiling double touch which at the time was just like what are we even doing here uh, this is just incredible gets back around to this the rotation to get the extra little bit of power right over the top of Garrett and that's kind of all she wrote but do you guys use different cars or do you kind of stick with the uh, if it ain't broke don't fix it octane finnick lineup let me know. And the other thing that I wanted to ask is, would you want to see more historic Rocket League stuff? Or do you like the more current event, current player kind of deal? I would be more than happy to do either if you have an interest in one or the other. Imagine if that went in. But yeah, cool to see that Chaussette has still uh, hung around, is still kind of doing his thing. It was cool to see the players of old like who is still like around i was like oh wow look at you know the old c9 team uh you know look at uh some of these you know players that i really had never i had heard of but had never really seen too much of like of course i know the shots that a lot has hit like the ceiling redirects and the backboard redirects but i had never really sat down and watched a lot gameplay uh, a lot of a lot it makes me have um a better appreciation of, uh, of the players that have come and gone. 13 seconds left. This one's kind of over. 
After this, we're going to get into uh, some of the news, like we said, of the offseason. And the next video I want to do is about the new Space Station gaming roster. So make sure you tune in for that one, guys. Shaking off a little bit of rust in this video. I'm sure you could feel it. It's been a little bit, but uh, hey, the uh, the only way to get better is to uh, is to put stuff out. So I have spent a little bit of time, you know, once you, I think the power of habit is something that's really impactful and true. And, um, I was in a, I was in a rhythm, you know, I was on a roll putting videos out pretty commonly. And then once you take, you know, a week off, it makes it a lot easier to take a second week off and a third week off. And at some point you just got to rip off the bandaid and trust yourself and, uh, not try and reinvent the wheel or overthink what you are doing um, because you will improve over time. The only thing that you can control or one of the only things you can control is, uh, is just putting stuff out um, and trusting your creative instincts and creative process. You can always iterate and improve as you go along. Um, but yeah, that's my little tiny motivational speech for this video. Guys, as always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune in and check this out. Hope you enjoyed our little journey into the uh, into the time machine here. Have a great rest of your week. And as always, guys, until next time, take it easy.